President Trump vehemently defended his decision to withdraw U.S. forces from northern Syria, which exposed the Kurds, who are U.S. allies, to attack. If Syria wants to fight for their land. That's up to Turkey and Syria, as it has been for hundreds of years they've been fighting. Turkey, Syria, and all forms of the Kurds have been fighting for centuries. I mean, this was going to be a war of lots of other groups coming in. This wasn't going to stop with Turkey against the Kurds. They've been fighting with the Turks for 300 years that people know of. The Turks and Kurds have not been fighting for hundreds of years, but they do have a complicated history. And to understand what's happening now along the Turkey-Syria border, we need to go back to 1918 and the end of the First World War. The Kurds are the largest stateless ethnic group, but they are far from a single unified bloc. In the Ottoman Empire, regions were loosely defined by ethnicity, but the idea that these regions could or should act as separate nation states with unique national identities didn't really exist outside of academic circles. When the Ottoman Empire dissolves at the end of World War I, um, you have a number of different agreements that the colonial powers come to. You have the Sykes-Picot Agreement, you have the Treaty of Sevres in 1920, which Turkey particularly took a lot of issue with, um, basically because it was a lot of the Allies kind of carving up Turkey into uh, a number of parts, giving territory to Italians and Greeks and, and uh, British and so forth. That treaty did include the possibility of the Kurdish people having their own state. But Mustafa Kemal Ataturk played a pivotal role in changing that. See, he was a colonel in the Ottoman army at the time and was able to consolidate the remainder of the Ottoman military to expel the Allied powers, founding Turkey. With that, the possibility of a Kurdish state was abandoned, and the new treaty, the Treaty of Luzon, divided the region. It was kind of the agreement, and this is a really loose way of interpreting it, but you know, France would have Syria, and the Brits would have Iraq, and so forth. So basically, you have the drawing of boundaries that not only kind of divide populations based on ethnic and religious uh, divisions, but also are manipulated in order to kind of serve the colonial power's interests. That meant the Kurds were split across Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and Syria. So what happened next was different, depending on which country they were in. We're going to focus here, on Turkey and Syria. Ataturk and his cadre had gone through the Balkan Wars and had gone through World War I and saw ethnic nationalism as dangerous. There was an erasure of Kurdish ethnic identity, and by erasure I mean killings, displacements, changing of town names, moving Kurds across the country. In 1978, some young Turkish Kurds adopted communism to push back against the Turkish government. They formed the Kurdistan Workers' Party, or the PKK, led by Abdullah Ocalan. In 1984, the PKK initiated a war with the government, and in 1997, the U.S. officially labeled it as a terrorist organization. Across the border in Syria, things unfolded differently for the Kurds. The collapse of Ottoman Empire uh, made uh, Turkey and Syria border uh, very much artificially manufactured. In 1920s, we see French mandate of Syria, in which uh, French would look at uh, Kurds uh, as a strategic asset. A lot of minorities under French empire would be um, supported in terms of their cultural rights, linguistic rights, and we saw some intellectuals, Kurdish intellectuals, coming from Turkey, joining a movement in Syria, and they are standardizing the Kurdish language. But in the 1960s, Syrian Kurds were stripped of basic rights, forced to migrate from their towns, and lost economic power. That changed in the 2000s. During that time, the People's Protection Unit, or the YPG, and its political arm emerged as dominant among a wide range of political parties and groups. The YPG is a militant organization that has strong links to the PKK in Turkey. There is an organic link between the uh, PKK and the YPG. If you go to northeastern Syria, you see the posters of uh, PKK leader Öcalan everywhere, which can only be there because the YPG allows it. When the US needed help pushing back ISIS in Syria, it worked with the YPG. 
to try to get around the fact that the YPG is essentially the Syrian sister organization of the PKK, that is the Kurdistan Workers' Party, the United States creates the Syrian Democratic Forces, the SDF. The goal was to make that a multi-ethnic fighting force. And that relationship lasted until today, uh, fighting and defeating territorially the Islamic State uh, and detaining a large number of uh, Islamic State adherents and their families. That alliance between the United States and the YPG is something that Turkey never accepted and now is very happy uh, to counter as the U.S. withdraws from northeastern Syria. With Trump's decision to remove troops from Syria, there was no longer a U.S. force mediating between Turkey and the YPG along the border. And suddenly, the regional dynamic shifted. So Turkey has long wanted to remove any PKK-affiliated group from the Syrian-Turkish border. The Kurds are only in that area. So for Turkey, it is another way of saying we want to get rid, not necessarily of the Kurds, but of the YPG that is the main party protecting these Kurds. There appears to be a green light to Turkish forces to invade. They do invade on October 9th. They agree to a ceasefire, and then Erdogan meets with Russian President Vladimir Putin, who essentially takes over the role of the U.S. and says, now we're going to have Turkey and Russian troops that are patrolling the area. Keep in mind that it's not just the YPG that's impacted. After all, the zone includes most of Syria's Kurdish population, and not all Kurdish people in this region support the YPG or the PKK. Which brings us back to President Trump and his justification for this move. Turkey, Syria, and all forms of the Kurds have been fighting for centuries. They haven't been at war with each other for hundreds of years. Um, the Kurds, in fact, were allies with the Turks um, during the War of Independence. There are a number of Kurds who say, I'm ethnically Kurdish, but I feel nationally Turkish. So the idea that the Kurdish people are somehow natural enemies or have been fighting for hundreds of years with the Turks is completely false, not to mention oversimplified. Their history is a complex saga of peace, suppression, resistance, cooperation, and violence. Most of that violence is a result of recent political tensions, and at times it has been on behalf of the United States. If there are statements that you've heard politicians say that don't quite make sense at rallies or state fairs or in that one friend's feed, let us know. Send us a note or a tweet with what they said and your question. We'll check it out.